Cram, we welcome back. Well, he's a bit of a, a mid-season star, if you like, and sugar me. Yes, you went to Melbourne and things didn't pan out, but um, he showed us enough talent last time, didn't he? Yes, he's, he's only a junior, he, uh, as far as starts goes. I think he's only 18 or 12 starts, so we... We took on a big sort of a mission for him to send him to uh, to Australia, um, but uh, he went super, but uh, circumstances didn't go his own way. So he's had a break, and here he is back staying fresh in NZ. Cran, how's he trialled up um, watching his last performance and behind AG's White Sox? Uh, were you pleased? Uh, yes, we were pleased because uh, obviously AJ White Sox, it was a yardstick of where we sit. Sure, he's an older horse and he's got a great CV. Sure, he might be past his peak, but uh, we're on our way up. But uh, at least we're not a million miles off the pack, put it that way. Sarah has told me several times she loves this guy. She, she enjoys having him around the stable. She obviously enjoys driving him. And she gets another opportunity off a, off a perfect draw as a result of where he sits against some of those horses on Friday night. Yes, very true. It's sort of well publicised that um, she probably kept the horse <laughs> in training. Um, I, I got very frustrated and we had a lot of uh, behind the scene issues and uh, she's been very good with them and uh, it's just great to see them pair up and getting results. So sure, from the one hole, uh, we're going to take the short way home. So it's a great advantage, which we will need, of course, uh, by no means we're dominating over those ones, but just hopefully we can be pretty close to them at the finish. Well, sure, we'd love to be in front, but pretty close to them will be a great result. Where does he sit, Cran? Is I mean, I, I'm not suggesting he's one of the, the best horses you've ever trained, but will he eventually get beyond this sort of, well, he's a freshman getting into free-for-all company? Is he going to be up to them? Are, are you hopeful? Uh, we, we paid a lot of money for him uh, originally because he's, he's got great bloodlines. He's from the hot, so excuse me, family. So that's going on and doing the job. And uh, if you asked me the same question six months ago, I would sort of be humming and harring. But um, he, he's got his chance to to, uh, to show his um, talents. And with only having a handful of starts, um, I can't be critical. And we're going to give him a chance. So I'd like to think he will fulfill. All right. This campaign, what's his major target at this stage? Well, we haven't really got one, but uh, in saying that, if he can sort of, you know, run a placing in this race, it gives us an idea of, um, is he good enough to race in the Taylor Mile? Is he good enough to race in the Messenger? Uh, the horse will tell me that story in um, 24 hours' time. All right. You're happy enough with him, though, going into this race? He's very fit. Uh, he's only lacking race fitness, but uh, we can only do that by going the track, and so that'll happen tomorrow. But uh, on the build-up, we feel as good as his hands in getting for fitness. All right, you've also got, uh, you and Chrissy, major icon, a first starter two-year-old who's got some bloodlines. He's a half to major Trojan who uh, went on and won a WA derby. So um, he's got some breeding. I'm picking he wouldn't have been cheap. Yes, we paid more than a round of drinks for him. <laughs> I sound like a big boy, but I'm not. I'm only an apprentice, really. But, uh, uh, yes, uh, as you saw, we had a weird misfortune. There's only three noms for the two-year-old race, and uh, the race secretary said, well, let's put him in a maiden race, and, I said, was well, your race horse? He's fit. Let's do it. So uh, here we are. We're drawing the second row, which you know might be a bad thing. We're in the running line at two on the second row. So, um, yeah, we'll give him a chance. Cran, trials have been good. Treacherous Gal beat you in uh, one of those trials and has won two from two for Regan Todd. Isn't he flying that Regan Todd at the moment? He always told me he was going to be a great trainer, but he's actually <laughs> sort of fulfilling now. Yeah, he certainly is. Uh, that's a good form line, though, for, for this particular race. And then has gone on and trolled since then uh, and won two. So, yeah, what are your expectations? Uh, I'd like to think, well, that was a good yardstick. What you mentioned was that great filly of Regan's. Uh, she looks like a superstar. And um, so for us to be close to it uh, several weeks ago is a good yardstick. So in a maiden race, uh, I'd, I'd like to think it'd be really competitive. If you're an above average two-year-old, we'll, we'll generally sort of handle a, you know, a, 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 an average maiden field. But I shouldn't say that. All respect to the rest, there might be a Cardigan Bay in that field. I don't know. Yep, Sarah takes the drive. Bookies have put up two dollars eighty. Two off the second row. First start a two year old. Oh, I think that's probably about right for the way he's trialed. Yeah, well, basically he's being on the second row, he's you know, he might settle, you know, the worst half of midfield. Um so he's gotta give them all a head start. So um yeah, he'll have to be on his game, put it that way. So the two eighty I wouldn't want to see him much slimmer. All right, we're going to see you at Addington Raceway, but your star three-year-old filly will be at Alexandra Park. Her name is Remember Me. You talk about the hot family. Well, she is out of the hottest family, out of Adore Me, the champion race mare herself. You, you did a great job with her leading into the Group 1 on New Year's Eve, where she finished second uh, and behind True Fantasy. A, an excellent run from her, so much so you decided to take her to Australia. Talk me through the campaign over there, because 
from this side of the Tasman, it looked to be a luckless one. Yes, well, we just wanted to go where True Fantasy wasn't. Uh, well, we weren't in the sales series, naturally being a homebred. So I said to Paul and Mary Kenny, I said, well, let's get a bit entrepreneurial here and um, jump over the ditch. And, uh, you know, she uh, she done good. She ran three. She won the first race. It was, it was a nice race. It was a 50K race down as the Rath Memorial. And uh, and then she won um, uh, two, three others, I think, just middle week ones. And then in the, in the Oaks, she did actually go super. She's probably gone as good as the winner, but not being the winner. Yeah. I know that's no one talks about a horse that runs sixth. But uh, she did, on performance, she went super. But um, it just wasn't her day. But that's racing. Our, our bad luck, someone else's good luck. Cram, was part of that mission... I suppose, hardening her up to this grand circuit racing because that's where she sits. She's clearly at that level. Uh, well, as, as many horse people and, you know, lookers on now can see, once they've had a campaign in Menangle, they do come back um, bulletproof. Uh, it's, it's I could spend 10 minutes trying to explain how that works there, but uh, it just sends them to a new level in fitness. Uh, like when they turn the corner, they look up that 400 meters straight. It's not only a fitness, but it's a mental um, toughness that's involved. So uh, we're going to use that to our advantage. And um, if that's good enough to win the Oaks in two weeks' time, who knows? But we'll make a try this Friday night. And um, yeah, as you'll see, young Carter's going to warm the seat there for, for, for Blair Orange the following week. All right. She comes up with barrier six this week. What's a pass mark? A uh, pass mark, she could actually run six in that field, Greg, and we still could be happy. But in saying that, we want to be winning, of course. But uh, I think just to um, to show true fitness for the you know, the big dancers the following week. But uh, if that wins there to win next or tomorrow, we'll take it. If not, we'll, um, we're going to get her sort of in cotton wool for the following week. All right, she's $5.50 uh, to win the Pascos, the Jewellers. So, uh, well, depending on what happens tomorrow night, it may pay for punters uh, to get involved in that prior to the prelude before we let you go gee it looks a nice day there in west melton a couple of fluffy clouds in the background and you're still out enjoying the the sun nice old nice old outfit there today yeah those straight out cumulus clouds behind us greg actually so <laughs> i don't know if that means rain in 10 minutes or an hour <laughs> you've confused me but it's not the first time you've done that to be fair uh the race is coming up in less than a month that horse krug yeah, things didn't quite turn out towards the back end of that com- campaign the way you would have liked in Sydney, but um, he needs to start thinking about racing, doesn't he, Grant? Yes, it was a bit of a challenge. We we had a little bit of a sort of a, uh, well, not a perfect health issue in the last start there, but, yeah, it wasn't the plan, but that's uh, the racing of animals, and of course, you know, on talent, he should have been winning that race, but he didn't. But, uh, yeah, we've got a few things to, to work on and which we will. And the, the challenge of going into this race, it's it's an amazingly talked about event. It's, it's obviously because new and there's a lot of money involved and there's two, maybe three Australians involved now. So it's just a buzz, I think, great to be in the circle of all right, he's back in New Zealand? Yes, he's in Auckland there, and um, Carter's sort of pampering him now as we speak, so uh, I'll go and join him next week, and hopefully we can um, get him fine-tuned for the for the big day of the 14th of next month. So what's the pathway for him leading into the race? He'll have, he'll have at least one start? Yes, maybe one or maybe just a trial, because uh, we're probably at a scene where we're race tight, we're really hard. Uh, before his last start, he'd had, uh, I believe, eight starts in 10 weeks, Yep. So so he's got a lot of base, a lot of bottom under him. So the last thing he needs is probably sort of to be motor matching the big boys before the race. Um, uh, so one public outing, but if it's a race or a trial, um, I'll let the horse tell us close to the day. All right. What's Kentuckiana's best winning chance over the next 24 hours then? Uh, this is a good question. And well, <laughs> I can't say sugar me to beat AJ White Sox, so I better say uh, major icon, our two-year-old. All right. Appreciate your time, Cran. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Rick.